our greenhouse is 24 feet long, 10 feet wide, or uh, yeah, 10 feet wide, and 24 feet. It's actually two 10 by 12 Harbor Freight greenhouses tied together in the middle there. You see a smokestack sticking out of the back. So we've been running a waste oil uh, brake rotor heater on a dog dish since October. And just a week or so, about a week ago, we changed from the eight inch dog dish to a 12 inch soup pot cut down to four inches. Uh, if you fill that thing too full, it, 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 it'll burn you out of there. Uh, so we just barely drip the oil in it. And if we want to be a little warmer because it's fairly cold at night, then we can crank it up by running the oil a little faster. Since October, we've burned at least 400 to 500 gallons of oil. These four barrels just came in. Uh, these two were the, one of the first, and then this one came in. Uh, it was, it's, it's a full 55 gallons of, of, of uh, car diesel, truck diesel. The pump came with it. They weren't using it, and it was kind of in his way. Uh, but the other day, I had pumped five, into a five-gallon bucket ready to mix the... Uh, I'll show you over. I was ready to mix that uh, diesel in, in with my waste oil and burn it in the waste oil heater. You see, I put some in that bucket right there, and I thought, dang, that's too nice. <laughs> I don't want to waste it because that waste oil heater can go through five gallons a night. And so I discovered this, this little boat cabin diesel heater that draws 37 watts of power to run the fan and the burner. Five kilowatts, it's rated five kilowatts. You'll see these on Amazon. I think we paid $100 for this. It runs on 12 volt battery or 12 volt power supply. I filled it full of brand new diesel to begin with. The little, the little uh, fill tank is about three, three liters maybe. I don't know if it's five liters, but it, it holds over a gallon right at a gallon, and then that's, that's the, the, the diesel tank is on top under the little metal piece, and then the burner section is underneath. And it sucks ambient air through the back, and blows it out the front. And that's hot enough, I can't keep my hand right there. It gets pretty warm. Up underneath, we've got the oil pump pumping from the tank up in next to the combustion receive pipe that receives the combustion air from, a, from the pipe on the right. The pipe on the left is an exhaust pipe. You see it here. That pipe on the left is really hot. And they sent this little muffler pipe with it. That hooks up there and you can clamp it on. And we've been running it for almost an hour now and I can't smell the diesel. Actually, when we first turned it on, it was just a couple of seconds of diesel smell smoke smell but there's not any smell at all with that thing and this isn't a real tight greenhouse so we it, it breathes you know but it, it, I'll tell you it doesn't smell hardly at all and yet I still think we should exhaust it like the instructions say we'll exhaust this to the outside but because it's so hot I'm going to couple this exhaust line to this three-quarter or a one-inch galvanized pipe and then I have some inch and a quarter, and I've got enough pipe I can zigzag through the greenhouse and absorb some of that heat in here before it actually goes outside. And also receive the heat that comes from the front of, you know. Right now we're keeping the greenhouse at 70 degrees, and I just turned the waste oil heater off. Because, oh yeah, it doesn't have any feed, but there's still some residual oil, and it'll take maybe an hour for that to burn down. As you can still see it's 35 degrees or 32, 33, 3 degrees outside and we're still at, at 65 degrees. The waste oil heater is pretty powerful. We also got some coconut oil, three buckets of coconut, coconut oil from a company. And you can see it's at 60 degrees it, it's pretty solid but around the edges maybe there's some liquid. And we can dump that liquid right in the pot and not plug up our feed line. <laughs> if you if you dump that stuff in this bucket, our main feed bucket, then it would clog up this line when it got cold, and we don't want to do that. We got a wise cam here to monitor the feed. I can see the feed through this isn't isn't running right now, but I can see that through my phone no matter where I'm at. And I also have a wise cam 
up here on the rafters to monitor the flame from this position I can see that it's flaming and I can see the temperature in the room night or day if the waste oil heater can't can't keep the temperature in here above 42 to 45 degrees then the natural gas heater comes on that's this 30,000 watt natural gas heater that doesn't require any electricity that's connected through a natural gas line to the front of the shop and it comes on it comes on sometimes if it's really cold in here um, I don't want to run this waste oil heater on high because I can't monitor it while we're sleeping through the night so we run it on low and it yeah, on a 35 or 30 degree night it might keep it at 50 degrees but on a on a 15 degree 20 degree night it, it'll it'll just bounce off you know with the natural gas heater it'll keep it warmer but the natural gas heater helps keep it up now we can crank this thing up during during if i if i was working out here i would fill that pot to two or three inches of oil and with that much oil in there the power is amazing and we could run the temperature up to 130 120 degrees if we want or even hotter you just have to be careful not to get too hot all right the diesel heater drew a few more watts to get started but then it runs consistently on the five kilowatt setting at 37.2 watts back there you see it on the my watt meter 37.2 watts 